Hello and welcome to our culture magazine on i24 News with the best from the world of entertainment and art. Today on our show, we host a diplomat who also wrote an unusual kids book. A conductor who defied the odds. And how countries make sure authors get paid for their work. But we begin with some cultural headlines. Some interesting sales from the international film market at the Berlin Film Festival. Sony bought the international distribution rights for filmmaker Kevin Smith's Task, the horror film starring Justin Long, Haley Joel Osment, and Michael Parks is about a young journalist who meets an adventurer with a special love of walruses. The film originated in one of Smith's successful podcasts and was written and put into production within weeks. Sony Pictures also bought James Ponsalt's The End of the Tour, before production even started. In the film, Jason Segel will play the role of David Foster Wallace, the successful writer who committed suicide in 2008 after battling depression for 20 years. The film will focus on a tour he made to promote his book, Infinite Jest. Jesse Eisenberg will play Rolling Stones reporter David Lipsky, who accompanied Wallace on the tour and wrote the book the film is based on. The X Factor, the musical talent show created by former American Idol executive producer Simon Cowell, has been cancelled by Fox after just three seasons. The show debuted in 2011 to decent ratings, but those dropped steadily over the years and were never on par with American Idol, also on Fox. The third season premiere drew only 6.5 million viewers. However, American Idol is also no longer the powerhouse it once was. Its 13th season premiered to only 15 million viewers, down 17% from last year. The X Factor did introduce successful acts during its run, such as Fifth Harmony and Alex and Sierra. Simon Cowell will now head back to the UK to work on the British version of the show, but American audiences will not get to enjoy his unapologetic style. The New York Fashion Week is in a full swing, but it seems that the future of New York fashion is in Brooklyn. The Old Navy Yard in the New York borough hosted its first catwalk show this weekend, Alexander, Alexander Wang's highly anticipated collection. The designer said he chose that setting because it reflects the mood of his collection, which experts say evoked a kind of urbane factory line. Others called the geometric shapes so sharp they were almost digital. Still to come in this year's New York Fashion Week are Donna Karen's runway show, Ralph Lorenz, and Calvin Klein, among others. I can't wait. Dan Oyan is an Israeli diplomat who served in Moscow and Copenhagen, but Oyan did not always dream to be a diplomat, and he expresses his unfulfilled life ambitions in a children's book he wrote called When Dad Grows Up. The book has been published in three languages so far and is coming out these days in Arabic. Very happy to welcome Dan Oyan to our studio. Hi, Dan. Hello. Um, so tell me a little bit more what, about the book. What, what is it about? Well, that's a, a small book where um, a father and son are talking just before the son is going uh, to sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the son is asking his father if when he was uh, small, when he was little, did he have an idea what he would like to become? And the father had uh, quite a few. Quite a few ideas. Yes, yeah. quite a few. <laughs> and he's actually... A very varied ideas. Very also. varied. And actually, this is the whole, the whole story goes with this ping pong between the father and son. When the father had these ideas of becoming different things, starting with world champion of gymnastics. And the kid, being the voice of reason, tells him, well, you know, maybe um, if you would be a world champion of gymnastics, uh, you will not be having enough time to play with me. Right. Or, 
if you will be, I don't know, firemen, then you know whenever there's a fire you have to go. Mm -hmm. It's not something that we can choose. So there's kind of a reversal of roles here. The, the, the kid is actually more grounded than the father being a free-spirited dreamer. Exactly. Like was that, that uh, intentional or was that, that a happy accident? I think it was, I think it was uh, intentional. <laughs> okay. but, but, but to be honest, you know, we, uh, we never know. We start something and it doesn't always come exactly like we, we, we hoped. Uh, I can tell you that my grandmother Dvorah, the late Dvorah, uh, she, she wanted me to be a big rabbi, and uh, as you can see, uh, it didn't, didn't uh, work out. Not yet. <laughs> and uh, she had a second dream. She really wanted me to be on television. I so see. actually, so right this now, is for, for Grandma Dvorah. Exactly. And as, as, as I hope um, in paradise, I hope they have a big screen, uh -huh. and she's watching it on a full screen, I'm you know, sure 3D they are. and everything, and <laughs> with very, very good. The louds and sounds and everything. So. Voila, that this one's on us. <laughs> yes, and uh, of course, uh, um, uh, it was um, this uh, little story um, that uh, that we started with, and it was, right. to be honest, a, a quite a quite a big compromise for me as well, because my intention was to have the serious book, something like 400 pages uh, with you know golden letters. On, on the cover and everything, right. like a brown we're now, we're cover. We're now seeing the, the Hebrew version. We also have a uh, um, Danish version here and uh, um, Serb, is it? Yes, it is. And the, the idea was basically to have such a, you know, a serious book with a lot of citations and stuff like that. And of course, no illustrations. And I had to make a little compromise. And <laughs> we have 24 pages little book with, uh, to be honest, you know, illustrations, wonderfully made by uh, right. Pepe Merzat. Now, it's coming out in Arabic these days. Right. Do you right. see a special significance? Well, yes, as, as an Israeli diplomat, I see, and it's a, 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 a read significant, at least for me. What uh, do you hope it can and, achieve? Well, to be honest, I don't think that it will, you know, make a, a huge breakthrough in the special relations we have with our neighbors. But it is, you know, another little, as we call it, another little bridge cultural bridge mm -hmm. between us and, and our neighbors, uh, right. between Israelis and uh, Israeli Arabs, uh, Jews and, 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 uh, and our neighbors. And basically, I think it uh, creates the possibility for them to look into a bit into our world and to see what, you know, things right. that are basically the same, the thoughts about our kids. Now, about our this, parents. Is, this is, as, you've, uh, as we've mentioned, it's partly uh, autobiographical. You did hope to be a world-class gymnast. You haven't totally was, given up on that actually, idea. Actually, I was you? planning to be the world champion in gymnastics. Okay. And as the first dream of my grandmother didn't uh, realize, it seemed, didn't materialize, this, this doesn't seem to have succeeded all the way, but I'm but still it's trying. it's partially successful. Can we see can see you doing some impressive, uh, you know, you can I see, can't do that. I'm, I'm still trying. I'm still trying. <laughs> I haven't, haven't lost totally. Never give up on your ideas. Right. <laughs> That's good. Um, Last, in, in just a sentence, how do you see the, the, the state of Israeli uh, authors, Israeli books in the world as someone who, who's been in charge of this? Well, we have, we have a wonderful, wonderful attention to Israeli literature. There's 5,000 books of, of Israelis during those years that have been published in 70 languages. We have wonderful things happening all over the world with the leading, you know, Amos Oz, of course, the, Fra the later Fahim Kishon, Uri Orlev, mm -hmm. and many, many others, uh, uh, Aleph Bet Yoshua, and so on and so forth. I'm, I haven't mentioned even half of them. And of course, there's a few books translated right. to Arabic as well, like uh, mm. Where is Pluto, mm. like um, mm -hmm. Five Balloons, like famous. Uh, and now Israelis. you're, so you're in good company. Good, very good company, actually, and I'm happy to be, you know, the first diplomat. Thank you so that. much for coming in, Dan. Thank you. The recent classical music Folljourne Festival in Nantes hosted numerous orchestras and ensembles from around the world. Among them was the symphony orchestra Divertimento, directed by Zaya Ziwani. Ziwani grew up in a tough neighborhood in Paris, but thanks to her talent, she's achieved rapid international success. Sandy Fortis has her story. At only 35 years old, Zaya Zayuni is one of the only female symphony conductors in the world. Her passion for classical music was instilled in her by her parents from an early age. I loved listening to music at home with my parents. When the Bastille Opera opened in Paris, my mother took us to see a concert. It's one of my first memories of contact with music. She was born to an Algerian family in Saint-Saint-Denis, a difficult Paris suburb 
not the best starting point for a career in classical music. It's not so much that growing up in Saint-Saint-Denis hurt my chances or gave me more trouble. It's just a very difficult job that requires you to be very mature, both personally and musically. Inevitably, when you're young, you don't always inspire the confidence of orchestra directors, and even more so when you're a woman. So I'm tempted to say that these are two aspects which were then and still are the most difficult part. In 2010, Zaya published an autobiographical book, The Conductor, which describes her experiences. I wanted to talk about my idea of classical music and my background, which is quite different from that of other conductors. My personal journey has led me to think in a different way, about being a conductor, about how I wanted to live, and I found it interesting to share that. She also shares her passion with young people as director of the Conservatory of Music and Dance in Stein, but also at the Orchestra Divertimento, which she founded along with young students when she was 20. I find it interesting that the symphony can be a source which allows young people to discover classical music. Classical music is not necessarily natural for many. Some come from a pop music background, some from very different cultural backgrounds. And I find it interesting to be physically present there and to be able to connect with them. Zayuni also creates links beyond borders. She leads the National Orchestra of Algeria with whom she has performed numerous concerts throughout the country. In uh, just a moment, we'll hear how Israel and other countries try to make sure authors are properly compensated. But first, a few cultural highlights from around the world. Not far from Sapporo in northern Japan, the 65th Snow Festival takes place this week. Over 200 sculptures made of snow and ice are on view to the delight of skiers, adults and children. This year, more than 2 million people are expected on the island of Hokkaido to view the sculptures. The festival chose the theme of the Olympic Games to coincide with the opening of the Sochi Winter Games. You can visit until February 11th. In Petah Tikva, a city just outside Tel Aviv, an exposition of sculptor Michael Gitlin. Gitlin, who started his career in New York in the 1970s, is considered a minimalist. The Petah Tikva Art Museum presents 16 of his sculptures in wood, paper and steel wool. Alternating between two and three dimensions, the work jumps back and forth between past and present. On view until April 26th. At the Docklands Museum of London, an exhibition about the London Frost Fairs. A unique event that takes place when the Thames River freezes over completely and turns into a street market and carnival. The small exhibition presents depictions of past frost fairs through art paintings and etchings from the 17th and 18th century. The Thames hasn't frozen since the end of the 19th century, so in order to glimpse this marvelous event, visitors can come to the Docklands Museum until March 30th. Now with me in the studio is Amit Kling. Hello, Amit. Hi, Oded. And you're here to um, tell us a little bit about how countries try to make sure authors are, are compensated. Right, so, you know, fixed, fixed, fixed uh, book prices agreements and laws are nothing new. We've been seeing them uh, throughout Europe for a few years now. Uh, the Israeli law has entered in effect last week, and, you know, as is very fitting a Jewish state, nobody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> Publishers are uh, complaining. Uh, the bookstores, the small bookstores are, aren't happy. The big bookstores have found a way to deal with it, but they're still, you know, they lack the... The former price first. Will it actually uh, help authors get paid more? Because nowadays it's very hard to make a living. One would hope, author. but the way this looks now, it doesn't look good. Now, what hap what's been happening for the past years in Israel is that uh, the two major bookstore chains, the giants, Timatsky and Tomitz Falim, have been battling it out with each other, making, you know, a crazy uh, pr slashing prizes, mm -hmm. doing this whole. Uh, market thing. Buy one, get three free. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, ends up you buy one and you get three you weren't even interested in and your book store, bookshelves are collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what's happening is, you know, a pr a pr the big percentage goes to the store, less to the publisher, right. and the author in the end ends up getting a ridiculous sum. I've heard reports it was like a quarter of a dollar per book, which is, of course, ludicrous. Uh, most authors in Israel just hope to get translated into English and live off royalties on that. Right. Um, but the way the, 
the law is, uh, is, has been, you know, it's had a long life. It's been rolling around for years in the Knesset. But what happened to it is that right now the law prohibits, as of this week, mm -hmm. to offer discounts on books uh, that have been out in the market for less than 18 months. But this could actually end up hurting the consumer. Yeah, you know, it does hurt the consumer. Um, it will... It, it is hopefully it will weed out this crazy buy one get three free culture, right. which is insane. How, how does this compare to to other countries? Right, um, the Israeli law has been modeled on the French one, which also prohibits you know discounts on less than eighteen. Also, by the way, the French market in the eighties was dominated also by two book chains that have had this duopoly of the market, um, and you know it's been the same solution in France. However. Uh, the law is considered a success. It's a staple even of their... It's, it became sort of a staple of their reading culture. They're proud of it. Right. They have uh, renewed it. They have uh, used it to deal with Amazon. Um, it sounds... Amazon is a big challenge, I know. Uh, Amit, yes. unfortunately, that's all the time all we right, have. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining us as well. I hope you enjoyed watching our show today and that you'll choose to join us again tomorrow. Goodbye.